Yeah, thank you very much, Leah. And um, yeah, hello and welcome to our startup pitch at DAI and Data Summit. As Leah just mentioned, my name is Daniel. I'm leading the Bitcom startup team, and I'm glad to host today's pitch, Regulation Meets Innovation, AI in Sustainability. After you just heard Philip's talk on AI and uh, sustainability, it's actually quite no nonsense for me to explain you uh, where you see the connections. But since I prepared it anyway, I'm going to read it out anyway to you. So when we talk about AI solutions and applications, we often talk about automation, producing content more efficiently, and being quicker. Efficiency often leads to better use of resources, not only time, but also energy or materials. According to a Bitcom study, digitalization in general can help reduce Germany's CO2 emission by up to 26% by 2030. As you can see, there's huge potential. With current technological developments, especially in AI, we need to find ways to unlock this potential. And the key to unlocking it I, uh, I guess you can assume it, startups. I'm delighted that today we're going to see three really, really interesting companies presenting their ideas from different sector, uh, sectors and their solutions for a greener tomorrow. But when we speak about technological development, we also speak about regulation. Sometimes we even tend to regulate technology without knowing its development yet. So before we start off with the pitches, I hand over the mic to Oliver Stucke of Capgemini Invent and Dr. Björn Herbers from CMS for a short presentation on regulation and innovation. Please give them a round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, having one of the last slots at an event is always a great chance to reflect on what has been said uh, before. Uh, I think we all saw many intriguing talks and had vivid discussions around two key topics that stood out. Um, one is innovation, new ideas that will bring us forward, bring society forward. And the other one, as we just heard, is regulation. Um, and well, the, the question is now, isn't it, uh, whether those topics contradict each other. Um, who breathes more innovation than startups? And w what we often see in newspapers is the AI Act is killing the European startup scene. Um, it's, the, it's the death sentence to innovation. But let, let's have a deeper look, because maybe uh, you cannot only well, bring those topics close together, maybe also there's a great chance that regulation done right and lived rightly uh, even fosters innovation. Um, so let's have a look at that. And by doing so, build the bridges uh, to those um, um, startups um, that will then later join us and present their ideas um, how, to, how to drive innovation in the sustainability sector. Um, in order to discuss that, um, Today, uh, here, here with you, or here for you, uh, my name is Oliver. Uh, in Capgemini Invent, I am the global lead for Trusted AI. With me is uh, Dr. Björn uh, Herbert from um, CMS Lawyers, who is a regulatory lawyer in everything digital. So uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, as we all also see, uh, Jessica is with us from our uh, Sustainable Futures team, where she is the trailblazer for everything, uh, data and AI as part of the jury. So, having, that let, uh, having said that, let's just uh, jump right through. Um, uh, today I arrived from Oldenburg, um, 20 kilometers from the, from the Northern Sea. Uh, why I'm telling you that is <laughs> because uh, we are, like the area is, is very well known for, say, three things. Lousy weather, yes, that's true. Uh, lighthouses also. And as you see here, um, uh, the, the energy transition is something that I can view from my kitchen windows. Um, we have liquid nitrogen everywhere. We have uh, those wind turbines. Um, you, you, you can't walk 10 minutes without seeing a, a new one. And they are a great way to visualize um, the, the, the new efforts for, for sustainability. Um, what is less known is the progress of, uh, of this um, energy transition is <laughs> was actually a little bit stalled by those application processes. Um, it can take up to two years to get uh, the application uh, uh, approved for a windmill, and AI can be a huge leverage to, um, to bring that forward. 
but, <laughs> uh, and we'll see why that is important, uh, it needs to be done rightly, um, so that it's still a valid approval, obviously. Uh, and another uh, very brief example, we have our um, annual Global Data Science Challenge together with UNICEF, where we always take a new use case, look at sustainability development goals, and see how data and AI can help with um, attaining those. Uh, Two brief examples. One is um, we were able to identify different insect populations by the sounds that they create, uh, are then able to, to, to track them and to, and to, to um, locate them in, in, their, um, um, in the area where they live. Another one is um, the flukes of whales. They have a very distinct pattern, and by applying computer vision to that, we were able to, to track their, their path and their populations uh, and also help preserving them. And I'm telling you that because the, the, the uh, URL, happywhale.com, where you can, can track those whales too, is open for everyone, so even for whale hunters. And that's where we want to go at. The, a, a, a great idea can also entail some kind of risks, uh, and that's leading us to the two key challenges that we see today, don't we? Um, climate change and um, supporting uh, uh, our planet and, and, and sustainability projects. And the one other one is applying AI, but a safe, a safe AI transformation that um, keeps us from well, um, um, seeing the downsides of AI gone wrong. Uh, in order to keep everyone awake, uh, <laughs> a very, very brief example of AI gone wrong. I know everybody has heard m more than three examples of this, but th this is rather new. So there's a company called Lindy. They have an um, intelligent assistant that helps people with their questions. How do I do that? Where do I find another thing? And one user asked Lindy whether it could provide a, um, a, a video, a tutorial video of how to perform a particular task. And this intelligent uh, um, um, assistant said, yeah, sure, go ahead. Here's the link. Um, Here's your tutorial video. But the fun fact is, <laughs> there is no tutorial video. It was never produced. So how exactly did this intelligent uh, uh, assistant that was trained on a large language model came up with an answer? Well, it's a probabilistic machine, is it not? So it said, well, the most probable reply starts with go to YouTube. Second most probable step would be Regasly because that was in the training data. If people ask you for a video, and you don't have one, send them there. And it's, it's a great story to tell, and it, well, transports and conveys the point, but what if something like that happens in, a, in an environment that is, well, not so funny, but can really lead to, 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 to dangers and exceptions? Um, exactly, in order to, to, to uh, keep us from those happening, I think the, the campus, we need to have some regulation in place. We cannot let AI applications roam freely and just see what happens. Uh, and the question of how that goes together with keeping innovation alive uh, will be answered by Björn. Thank you, Oli. Oli, I, I really like the, the view from your window uh, in the Oldenburg area. This, this uh, looked very nice, this green landscape, very peaceful. Uh, the view from my picture is a bit different. It's not exactly this. I have to take a small drive to get in front of the Atomium, but as you might have rightly guessed, um, I'm based in Brussels, not in Oldenburg. Now, a couple of months ago, I was in the Bay Area um, meeting clients, and I was in the, in the hotel. Um, I had a chat with a few people, not an elevator pitch, just a chat, and they said, you have a funny, funny accent. Where, where are you from? France? I said, no, I'm from, I'm from Brussels. And I said, oh, that's where these Eurocrats create all this red tape, which uh, creates burden for companies and, and, and hinders innovation. As you know, we in the US, we innovate, you regulate. And of course, they have a certain point. Um, the EU has been incredibly creative and um, in the last years in, in, in creating new regulation and not everything makes sense. I mean, the, I think nobody still can really tell you what problem exact the Data Act is supposed to solve. Um, uh, but I think the AI Act does not fall into this, this category. Is the AI Act perfect? No. I mean, we have, we've heard lots of examples over the last two years. The colleague just mentioned another one where we have inconsistencies in, in the AI Act. Is the AI complete? Not even that. We, we will see tons of implementing acts over the next years um, to address a, a multitude of, of questions. But, and I think this is 
where you were leading, Oli, uh, there can be no doubt that something like AI requires uh, regulation. And um, I'm, I'm looking back at the atomium again. I think nobody would uh, think it would, would be a good idea to operate a nuclear power plant without any regulation. And letting AI steer a critical infrastructure like a power grid can basically have the, the, the same effect. So the EU acted quickly and they uh, introduced this, this framework and now companies at least have a playing field, something to, to work on. And of, of course it creates uh, uh, compliance requirements and that's, that's a burden. But uh, if you're just looking at the, the startups which we present in a moment, there are special rules for startups. There are also these regulatory sandboxes which allow for experimentation. And I think the most important aspect really is um, the AI Act uh, creates a, a level playing field in Europe. If you comply with the AI Act, you can scale your business in Europe and you can also probably scale it worldwide because that's the positive side of the, 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 the Brussels effect. If you can uh, comply here, you can comply everywhere. I'm a, a lawyer and as a law firm, we advise uh, clients on, the, uh, on, uh, on, on legal matters. But of course, in the end, it's the, the, the business that counts. And, but with a topic like AI, which is extremely future-facing, and as, as uh, Michael in his introduction rightly pointed out, where rules were created in for something which is still evolving, um, regulatory compliance and implementation of business cases goes, goes hand in hand. So regulation, please meet innovation. Thank you so much. So. Um, what does that now mean? Why were we telling you these stories? Um, because, um, let, let's face it, um, startups are a great way to bring innovation into, an, into existence uh, and to come up with new ideas. Uh, and and we are to totally amped to just, uh, like now, uh, uh, right, see the ideas that those startups uh, bring to the table. However, if they want to take the next step and will then have to step out of those uh, sandboxes and those exceptions, um, some support is uh, directly needed in order to be able to comply with all of these regulations while still being rather small. Uh, that's why um, CMS and ourselves uh, will uh, hand over as, as, as a prize to the mini startup an initial uh, AI readiness assessment to, in order to um, enable you to take the next steps and have us cover um, those regulatory burdens. Uh, now, I think everybody is uh, happy uh, to hear those ideas, those startups. Um, I think, Daniel, you will take over from here. If you let me, I'm <laughs> definitely going to hand, uh, take over. Thank you very much, Oliver and Björn. Round of applause for those guys, please. And uh, thank you very much for, for the insights and, um, and for the quick refresh on the legal framework conditions. Mm -hmm. I think we are well equipped to, to start with the pitches now. Thank you very much. And we're going to see you later when we hand over the prizes for the, for the winner. Thank, thank you. you. So, guys. Obviously, we can't start a pitch without our jury. Um, so please welcome with me on stage, you just saw her on the slides earlier, uh, Jessica Schöndorfer. She's a management consulting at Capgemini in the field of data-driven sustainability strategies as well as innovations and performance management. She has more than eight years of consulting experience in a variety of industries, uh, industries such as public sector, automotive, manufacturing, insurance, and life science. Happy to have you here, Jessica, welcome. <laughs> Furthermore, um, I'd like to welcome on stage Fabian Krautwurst. He's a principal at World Fund, a Berlin-based climate tech fund, which recently raised over 300 million euros. Prior to joining World Fund, Fabian invested into software businesses uh, for more than half a decade as a general VC for Cavalry Ventures. Happy to have you here, Fabian. <laughs> and. Uh, Last but not least, you already heard him earlier, Professor Dr. Antonio Krüger. He is uh, the CEO of the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence and professor at Saarland University. He's an entrepreneur as well, uh, just by himself, founded a company uh, a couple of years ago, and he researches in intelligent user interfaces and cognitive systems. Happy to have you here, Antonio. Welcome. Hello, Freud. Hey. So, dear jury, thank you, thank you very much for joining us. Happy to have you here. So, what's going to happen next? Um, one after another, I'm going to uh, ask the startups to come up here on stage, and they're going to have five minutes to present their idea and their company to the jury. 
When you run out of time, they're going to hear a little bit of music. So don't be confused once you hear these sounds. It just tells us the five minutes go over. There's no reason to evacuate the room. Um, followed by the pitches, we're going to have a short Q&A session with the jury. And after afterwards, the jury will leave the stage and we'll discuss um, about like which startup they figured out would be like the best to win the prize money of 2,000 euros, a small travel allowance, a free membership at Bitcom, and um, what Oliver already mentioned, a free AI act assessment sponsored by Capgemini. So without losing any more time, um, I'd like to welcome our first startup, which is Citrus from Bayreuth, and the CEO, Til Zwede, who will present the startup today. Happy to have you here. Round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you. So, Till, you good to go? Yeah, So happy to go. Nice. Your five minutes. Perfect. Five grams of microplastic. That's roughly the weight of this credit card here and what each of us consumes in microplastics every week over the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. Um, and it's also that, that which causes uh, cancer to grow, Alzheimer's to spread, and cardiovascular diseases to develop in our bodies. Due to the, that, research is trying to find these ubiquitous microplastics in our world, and regulators are starting to address this challenge by forming regulation and forcing, for example, wastewater treatment plants to monitor microplastics from 2027. Um, but it's also causing real economical costs today in many industries. Uh, for one, it's consumer goods and uh, some chemical companies where we have uh, the reputational damages that all of us know about. Okay, that's, that's some kind of uh, damage. But we also have uh, actual costs in uh, costs of quality in pharmaceuticals, uh, especially antibody um, uh, medication, and also in high quality chemicals such as li super lightweight plastics. And all of these suffer from the same issue. If currently you want to measure microplastics and detect them, you or probably rather your intern will go to the sampling station, uh, take a sample manually, prepare it manually, send it to some kind of an expensive lab where specialized equipment and uh, personnel will analyze this sample. And after a few weeks and a few thousand of euros, you will get the result for one single sample. And that's where we from Citrus come in. We develop a process integrated sensor that delivers microplastic information and detection uh, in real time autonomously and with, uh, through this economically and continuously. Um, for that, we use a patented um, technology, which is uh, machine learning, which you might know, enhanced impedance spectroscopy. Impedance spectroscopy is physics. Uh, you span up uh, some kind of electromagnetic field, and each time a particle passes through that, you see a, a change in the electromagnetic signals. Um, we feed or we process these signals. Uh, we generate roughly 180 features uh, uh, every time a, a particle passes through. Uh, feed this to a continuously improving neural network, and that will give us information for each specific particle. What kind of material was it? Glass, plastics, metal. If plastics, what kind of plastics? So PS or PET or whatnot. The size, uh, with that the weight, the shape of this particle. And once you have that, you can calculate things such as the concentration of particles in the fluid, uh, the size distribution, the material distribution over time, and so on and so on. Um, with this, we propose a unique value to many industries currently. Uh, one is improved quality, either of your measurements or of your products through this monitoring. Uh, digitized processes, which are currently manual and thus expensive, thus saving money through automated and cost-effective measurement and detection. And lastly, we minimize risks from regulation, from reputational damages, and from uh, quality costs. Um, to be the best product, we do this as an all-inclusive, everything as a service, because nobody knows what we are doing. So we handle all the hardware, installation, uh, servicing, and we handle the whole data pipeline from the measuring point until the process data goes back into the system of the customer. Um, through this pretty standardized system and the digital approach, we have a high scalability both over sectors and geographically and can tackle this microplastics detection market, which is huge today already and continuously growing. Um, and we also deliver pretty unique characteristics, which 
as I've described earlier, are unrivaled as of today. Um, lastly, uh, last year we patented our process, which I've briefly described, um, and started a, a LEAP innovation program with the Bundesagentur für Sprunginnovation, the SPRINT, which is having its fifth birthday next week. Um, we are currently doing our first projects where we test our prototype and validate it. Next year, pilot customers, the year after, uh, follow-up financing and market entry. Until I'm the CEO of Citrus, as, you, as you've heard, with my three co-founders and 30 motivated team members, we stand to challenge the current state of microplastics detection. And we are not alone to do this the best. We have a large network of research, regulatory, and industrial partners which help us develop our solution. Um, and lastly, I challenge you to join us and revolutionize the microplastics detection together. Thank you, and have a nice, nice day. <laughs> thank you very much. Please stay on stage. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Exactly five minutes. Uh, so we have that one for you going. Uh, Jury, do you have any questions for Till? I want to kick off. I kick off. Um, thank you for the yeah. pitch, first of all. Good Thanks. timing. Nice fun. Um, maybe uh, can you elaborate a little bit like from a market perspective in the sense of like uh, who are customers for this? And yeah. also... Um, how do you justify for them as a, from the buying behavior yeah. um, to pay a reasonable price for this? Yeah, um, we, have, we have like several markets which we will attend one after another. The first one is research. They are happy with paying a high price because they currently have high costs today um, and they are happy to develop, co-develop with us. So this is pilot customers. Um, and we are currently working, um, I'll just name a few, few uh, aspects. Uh, one is Gerolsteiner, for example, is working with us, and they are obviously trying to make their water better. Uh, we have a plastics recycling and manufacturing plant, which has problems with microplastics they don't want in their recycling washing machines, uh, reducing quality. Um, and lastly, um, we have pharmaceuticals, which are antibody-producing companies, and uh, they work with certain polymers, which regularly end up in their... Um, antibody medication and they obviously don't want that and can't sell that and that's like a, a single digit million loss every time they detect one particle of microplastics. Um, yeah, also from my side, thank you very much for the pitch. Um, I was wondering in which way do you plan to cooperate with um, cities, for example with like Stadtwerke, because I don't know if you've read the news, but for example, in the Berlin water, they have found stuff that they didn't want to find, yeah. basically. <laughs> so would this also be like a customer group that would be interesting yes. for you? Yes, we, we are doing that as of today. And two days ago, my, my technical team was in Bayreuth uh, at the wastewater treatment plant, and we measured microplastics there and at the outlet of their treatment plant at inlet. Um, and that is one of the, they, they, are regu they will be regulatory compliant, uh, and need to monitor their microplastics detection. And so wastewater treatment plants, um, most of them are actually in Germany, so that's a home advantage, um, are one of our biggest first customer groups. So we have 40 seconds left. One yeah. quick question, yeah, one maybe, quick answer. Maybe very quick, uh, yeah. very nice talk. Um, uh, what about microplastic removal? Uh, we are working together with Microbubbles. Uh, you might have seen their logo there. Uh, they are developing a new way of removing microplastics from uh, liquids. Um, through small air bubbles. Microplastics tends to stick to air bubbles, uh, then go to the top and you can just skim it. Um, and our system will help any type of microplastic removal to monitor the quality of removal. So, yeah. okay. Perfect, another so. on-point landing. Thank you very much, you. Till. Um, and uh, yeah, round of applause. That's Till Svede, co the CEO and co-founder of Cyprus. So we changed the sector a bit, and uh, we're going to have a deep dive into energy. And I'm welcoming Robert Quick, COO and co-founder of Drava, for his five minutes pitch. Um, Robert, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Robert. I'm co-founder of Trava, as you heard. Trava is a electricity provider for B2B businesses. And uh, we use data and AI to help companies get greener, cheaper, and stable electricity supply. So I think we all heard by now that energy is a big problem. We have high average prices on energy. We have rising green 
requirements, unprecedented volatility in the energy markets, and a lot of people don't really want to invest anymore, especially companies that use electricity. But, and I think this is really the beauty of electricity markets, you can really have it all. You can have green, stable, and most importantly, effect, uh, affordable electricity all at the same time. And this is exactly where Trava comes in. Our mission is to empower companies of all sizes to thrive on renewables. And thrive is really the important word here. We don't want them to get by and consume electricity, but we want them to profit from the green system that we are building here in Germany and in Europe overall. So how do we do this? Trava is very much a data and AI-driven company. We take data and information from all different sites, most importantly, the markets, spot markets, future exchanges, PPA, that's power purchase agreement, markets with solar and wind farms, batteries. We take external data like weather data, forecasts for long and short term prices, and different scenarios that are being developed. And we all put them to use at our customers, where we manage the consumption of electricity, charging infrastructure, batteries, and also their on site generation. And on top, we also provide intelligence to them on their costs, emissions, and also help them file their reporting. So basically a broad look and a platform in the middle that uses data from all different sites to help our customers. How does this look like in a product? We have three distinct offerings that we are using for our customers' benefit. First and foremost, supply. We are a fully licensed utility company here in Germany and are helping our customers to build best-in-class renewable electricity procurement portfolios. So basically, similar to a robo-advisor in the financial markets, we would build an electricity procurement portfolio for a company, mostly based on contracts directly with wind and solar parks. Then we provide intelligence in an online dashboard, which we call Manage, where you can view all the data that you need to steer your electricity consumption costs and emissions in one place. And in the next step, we start flexibilizing your energy consumption within your production facility, meaning that we help you to, lose, uh, to use the electricity when it's cheapest and greenest, which now most of the time comes together very nicely. So you might have heard about this concept a few times by now, and we have some really great companies all over the place which are already working on similar topics, especially in the small and household sector and also in the large customer, like the huge energy consumer sector. But we believe that the middle segment here, the one that's actually consuming half of the electricity in Germany, is vastly underserved, our beloved Mittelstand here in Germany. And this is exactly the customer uh, segment that Trava uh, is trying to engage with our products. Short case study from one of our customers, a German manufacturer here in North Rhine-Westphalia. They're consuming 21 million kilowatt hours annually of electricity, have around 100 million revenues. So electricity is around 3, 4% of their total cost base. We were able only by optimizing their supply to save costs of around 30%. They now switch from a fully gray to a fully green electricity contract, where 77% of the electricity they use was generated in the, neck, in the exact hour that uh, it was also produced. And also we have next steps planned on uh, flexibilizing their energy supply. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, let's thrive on renewables. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Robert. Jury, do you have any questions for him? Um, I can, uh, yeah, I can start. Um, very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering who are your energy suppliers? And um, you mentioned that you are um, yeah, bringing a lot of more flexibility in the energy um, provisions. 
is this something that the suppliers also like want to? Like, how do you how, how do you get them on board? So our suppliers are mostly wind and solar parks here in Germany. We contract directly with them or the companies that own them. So those could be farmers, this could be asset holding companies, but this could also be other energy producers like large energy companies. Um, and of course we trade with the energy exchanges. So this is also where we get a lot of our energy from. We are though an independent energy utility, so we are not bound to, I don't know, the large utilities that you might know. Um, how do we get customers on board? This is actually something that is quite difficult for us because we have a quite complex product. So we use a lot of sales automation where we also use a lot of AI to really make our product very, very tangible to them and visualize basically how this otherwise invisible world will work for them by basically visualizing their energy procurement strategy, their microgrids and how the electrons will flow. And this gives them a really better understanding of how this will work. And all of this was very difficult to do when you all had to do it manually. But now with uh, AI and machine learning, you can generate these kind of things in minutes. So uh, thank you, Robert. I know the company and I think it's very impressive what you have achieved so far. Um, why was there an opportunity in the first place in the sense of like the incumbents who have been there, one might told you you're crazy to still go after this opportunity, still they fumbled it. Um, why did they do so in the sense of like, why is there at all an investment opportunity since they have been positioned so well to actually grasp it? Yeah, I think uh, after the energy crisis, so before electricity procurement was really a non-topic for a lot of these Mittelstand companies. It's crazy if you see how much money they spend of it, uh, on it and how much they actually know how it is working. Um, and I can totally understand it. This was not very important. But then the energy crisis came and for the first time a lot of companies had to get familiar with the topic and they had a lot of learning moments, I think, in this and were really overwhelmed with everything that is possible in the energy markets. And that opened up a huge opportunity for new business models like ours. 15 seconds, uh, Antonio. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, very nice talk, pool product, no further questions. Okay, <laughs> no you. questions, just a statement, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Robert, for these thank insights. You. Uh, see you later on stage. And, um, Now we're already, already, already going to come to our third startup today and our final startup. Uh, please welcome on stage Christian Müller. He's the CEO of Waste End from Bremen. And um, Christian, you ready for your five minutes? Yes. So here you go and a round of applause. Hello, everyone. So I'm Chris. I'm co-founder and uh, co-CEO of Waste End. And what we do at Waste End, we are trying to make waste streams transparent. Um, transparent and uh, clear for big companies such as waste incineration plants or even uh, sorting plants. So we're working with really big uh, waste quantities and important is also the B2B business. And uh, what we do here is we're trying to detect what kind of qualities are in this huge pile. So it's not this kind of waste which you put your paper in a paper bin or the plastic in a uh, plastic bin. We're looking here really at large amounts of various materials like textiles, organic materials, um, paper, metals, and all this kind of stuff. And the big plants like the sorting plants um, and waste insulation plants, they suffer of it because they need to identify what kind of qualities are there in order then to, um, to try to adjust the processes, but also to avoid that the plants are uh, shutting down because such uh, waste to energy plant, if it's shut down, you can say about a couple of hundred thousand euros um, per day they will lose. Here's an example like uh, in a waste incineration plant where a lot of material is there in place, like you can say like 5,000 tons are there, and the material needs to be analyzed. And the material needs to be, um, by the crane operator, analyzed what qualities are there and what kind of harmful um, objects are there lying. And he has to decide what to put in incineration to generate energy in this heating. And uh, by assessing the quality, it's very important that he puts the right material at the right moment in the installation so that this energy is uh, stable and low emissions are generated by the, um, by the installation. And what Western does, we are providing solutions, tools, 
for all these various tasks in big plants like waste insulation, um, sewage sludge, uh, for example, but also in uh, sorting plants in order to understand what's happening in the plant and to support efficiency and safety in the operation. And how we do it? We have sensor boxes at the right places in the plant, like here the drop chute, where um, the material is perceived with RGB, with uh, thermal ca cameras or radar. And what we do is we analyze, for example, the impurities, so rigid, large objects which can harm the plant. We're looking at the materials like uh, plastic, metal, and so on. But the most important, these are the very important key um, uh, factors for such plants. We're trying to estimate how much emissions will be generated if this material is uh, incinerated. On the other side, also how much, um, how much energy is in the material if it's incinerated. We are in exchange with our customers, and we do always a kind of economic uh, analysis, how much benefit they see, and it's above um, about uh, one million per year if the plant is completely equipped with our solution. We are currently um, in our, let's say, tech readiness uh, stage 2024, where we have expanded um, with our products uh, in Germany already. We have eight plants equipped with our system, and our first plant is in Spain. Uh, recently, or will be uh, equipped, the contract is uh, months back uh, signed, and we have also very soon, uh, we are expanding to Portugal, hopefully, if everything goes well, and we are also in exchange with UK, France, and Netherlands. Our system is uh, pretty, I would say, uh, transferable, as we are already uh, in exchange with reclaimed wood, so there's all kinds of uh, trash wood, which needs to be maybe used for um, recycling purposes, but they need to know the purity of the material. Also, there we are in exchange. And um, especially sorting, that's always a very important point also for recycling. So what we are looking for, obviously for partners in academia and uh, industry, where we see knowledge exchange, but also to, at the end we have to fund also our development. Customer networks, very important. All these companies are, the plants are, um, let's say, coordinated in uh, associations. And there we are, have already access to the ETAT, which is uh, the main one in Germany, and we are also trying now to get into the associations of, uh, of Europe. And very important, regulators, because waste is driven uh, by regulation. All the um, plants, uh, it's a highly regulated uh, space, and that's why it's also very important there um, to look um, into, into that. And um, at the end, uh, waste is driven by by waste, it's also fueled by waste, and uh, you see here our team, we are all super powered and motivated because we get a lot of feedback from um, big plants, like uh, from f starting from Remondes, Vattenfall, Fisio, these are all these big plants in Germany, and that powers us, and we know that we are on the right track. Obviously, um, we have to grow and be to, pro uh, produce our, to develop our products more stably. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Jury, do you have any questions for him? Maybe I should start. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> thank you very much. So could you say a little bit more about uh, exactly um, the, the business model? Mm -hmm. This is actually a, a product-based model, so it's basically the sensor box. Is it services? Is it kind of integrated solutions? Uh, or, or in which direction are you planning to go? Yeah, it's a, a hardware service combination. So uh, we, we provide the integration work to the plant. On the other side, uh, we are um, providing the services like impurity detection, forecasting models um, as a software as a service. So there is a, a monthly yeah. uh, license fee and, and exactly. service fee, okay. We also, uh, some customers also want to rent and not to buy, okay. so that's also a possibility. So we, we try to adapt uh, what the customer is looking for. Okay. Um, what's the average between the first touch point with your customer until the signing of the contract? And which are the factors which have an impact on that in the sense of like it might take longer or? Yeah, this is a very good point. So um, we see that waste is a very traditional industry, but in the last years it has a high impact. Also, AI and new technologies have an impact. There are a lot of innovative or innovation driven people uh, in these plants and um, and uh, usually it takes, uh, we, do, we have a first talk that we analyze uh, the big pains in the plant and then from there on uh, like two months um, to build uh, the, the sensor boxes, to build the hardware, also to integrate this. Okay, it takes about two days maximum. And then um, also we have base models which we have trained. We have to, to tune the material to the plant 
and this is going also automatic, I would say, roughly three months mm -hmm. from uh, first contact, if also, of course, the plant is fast, right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, thank you very much also from my side for that pitch. Um, I was wondering, um, like how many customers do you currently have yeah. and how many are in the pipeline? Yeah, so we have um, 10 customers in Germany. Uh, one is, uh, as I said, in Spain. Uh, we have also, hopefully yesterday, have we had a good pitch uh, in Portugal, and it looks like that we are starting there as well with one plant. And um, we have no cold calls. All our uh, customers and, and leads which we get, they're all warm calls because we are getting known, in the, especially in the uh, waste to energy part, and we have roughly, I mean, 20, 30 in our HubSpot. So it's really uh, growing, and um, also the sales team has to grow. Obviously, so it's going well at the moment. Touch wood. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Christian. You can stay with me here on stage. Jury, Jessica, Fabian, Antonio, you have the tough job now to decide on a winner. So I would kindly ask you to leave the stage to follow my colleague um, for a quick decision on who's going to be the winner of our today's pitch. And in the meantime, I'm going to have a quick chat with our founders. So Christian, please take a seat, Robert, till if you want to come back on stage, um, Happy to have you here, and um, yeah, please sit down. Hi. So, first of all, thank you very much for joining us in today. On the one hand, I think like you all work on really interesting products. On the other hand, you really work in fields which are really, really important for the future: clean water, green energy usage, uh, also like waste and recycling, having like the circular economy going. So, figuring out like that, the, there's a change from having like the whole discussion on sustainability, um, going rather in a, in a public debate to more geopolitical issues like the war, uh, the Russian war in Ukraine at the moment. Um, we have the stagnating economy in Germany, and I think all the jury all ask you free like, how do you approach your customers? Do you see like a different sentiment now if you go to companies and tell them, oh, I have a good green solution for you. We are a startup. Do you want to work together with us? Do you see like there's a change in sentiment at the moment? Certainly, so yeah, start. certainly. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that through a lot of regulations such as CSRD, CSDD, CBAM, a lot, of, a lot of companies are forced to... Uh, think about sustainability in some way or another, and that opens the door for us. Um, and what's also interesting, I think, for us as founders is that we ourselves are also target of these regulations. Some now directly, some maybe only in a few years when we are growing. Um, but also we have to think about sustainability. And I think in many ways uh, currently we are seeing less of this rivalry between different kinds of sustainability, and I think most here in the room will probably agree that it will need all three of our solutions, um, and each of us will need the other one's solution. Um, so I think the, the, the market is opening. And yeah. So you, there's still a market, Robert. I think also you had on your slides the cost efficiency bonus, like saying mm -hmm. you can actually save money on that. Is that something where you can see that companies are really like, nodding their heads and saying, like, okay, that's the solution I really need? Yeah, I think when it comes to sustainability topics, I almost must say, unfortunately, cost saving is still the number one thing that drives customer attention. And I think in many um, of sustainability topics that we also saw today, it actually goes hand in hand very well because there are great products where you can combine sustainability, cost savings, and um, thereby have a good business case and do something for the environment at the same time. And I think it becomes more and more evident in many, many sectors that this is possible. And therefore, this rise of climate tech or sustainable startups is not something that is mostly driven by regulation, but also just by making sense. Mm -hmm. Christian, you said earlier in your pitch, waste is driven by regulation. So would you agree with Robert that it's not only regulation, or is it only regulation which is driving the plants to, to buy greener solutions? I think both. I mean, um, the waste plants are pretty strong in competition, obviously, because it's, it's, a, it's a resource, it's, it's fuel uh, for the plants. Um, Germany is importing waste uh, from, from other countries as a, as a business, obviously. But also regulations is very important because um, 
on the other side, I think we waste and exists because of the regulation, because there, um, there needs to be cleaner, um, 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 lower emissions, uh, um, and, and so on. And uh, I think um, with our solutions, uh, we can their support. Mm -hmm. And what would you say, like, what would support you as a startup to approach new customers? I think uh, the umbrella organizations, so, so to get access to, um, the, um, to, to exchange with regulators, because uh, we, see we have the uh, CO2 Act, uh, the, um, um, the, the fossil versus biogenic materials, so all these base energy plants are currently suffering to estimate how much uh, biogenic material is in the, in the material and um, in the waste, and um, that's, I think, uh, very interesting, because it, it has given us Mm -hmm. the, the guiding towards um, building uh, also solutions in this direction. Yeah, thank you very much. I see Leah's already here. We are on a tough so, time so schedule. I'm so, so sorry that I have to interrupt this very fascinating conversation you are having. But as you can probably see, we have a special guest who has arrived perfectly on time. And we're going to have to keep the tension on who is going to uh, win this uh, startup pitch session high until after the next block. So I want to thank all of you for this discussion. And we're going to continue the part of the startup pitch afterwards. Back to Daniel. Yeah. Thank you very much, Leah. And um, yeah, since you're all already here, um, I'm very happy to welcome you back to the Startup Pitch. And now we're going to see who is the winner. So please, startups and jury, will you come back on stage to me? Don't be too shy. Come on, guys. So a round of applause for our startup, for Robert Quick, <laughs> Til Zwede, and Christian Müller. And Minister Habeck was right when he said we have a lot of potential here in Germany. We have a lot of startups here. We have innovative ideas and creative minds. And I'm really glad that we were able to welcome three of these creative minds here on stage today, working on sustainable topics on green energy, clean water, and resourceful waste management and circular economy. So, Jessica, you had a tough decision as a jury to decide on the startup you're going to hand the price over today. How was the decision? Um, the decision was tough. So thank you once again for the great pitches. It was yeah. very inspiring and also very nice to see what great startups we have um, in a sustainability context. Um, it was a very tough decision. And um, yeah, you were all very close. But um, in the end, we were wondering what is, which, which like, startup had the most climate tech aspect which might be an industry which is a little bit more underserved currently with climate tech. And um, yeah, who could we support best with um, yeah, providing an end-to-end -end AI um, um, readiness ex um, assessment also with legal and technology aspects and decided that we wanted to um, yeah, hand over um, this prize to Waste End. <laughs> <laughs> You got, you got your, your prize. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> can So, Christian, congratulations. Life changing moment for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> Just great. So uh, I'm really, really happy. And it's again um, confirmation for our team that what, what we do right now is the right way. And um, it's a lot of challenges ahead, I guess, still for us. But it's a big uh, plus. So I, I guess I will come here with a motivation booster home. So thanks a lot. Wonderful. Really, thanks a lot. <laughs> so when you go. Go to throw away your rubbish next time. If you need a new mattress, for example, or some uh, plastic rubbish, remember <laughs> that somewhere in Germany there's going to be a plant powered by waste end, and they're going to pick out like your mattress to recycle it. So thanks for that solution, Christian. Thanks for the startups. Thanks for the jury. Thanks to Cup Gemini um, for sponsoring the startup pitch. Thank you all for being here today, and yeah, see you next year.